Hello, third graders. Welcome to our lesson today on the Midwest. We have learned so much this week so far about the Midwest. We've talked about the Central Plains and the Great Plains, the Mississippi and Missouri River, the Great Lakes. We've learned about that there's the most fertile soil on earth in the Central Plains, that there's the Corn Belt and the Wheat Belt and the Dairy Belt, where we get lots of, of our goods from. We talked about that their livestock and our meat come from the Midwest, and even many of our cars are produced in the Midwest. Today, we're going to look at what would it be like to visit there? What kinds of things would I do? What kind of food might I eat? And what kind of activities might I participate in? So let's get ready to dive into the Midwest region further. To start off with, let's look at our statements that we're going to answer afterwards. True or false? Chicago, Illinois is an important city because of its location near waterways. True or false? The Mall of America has more than 520 stores, 50 restaurants, 14 movie theaters, and an amusement park. And true or false? Crazy Horse Memorial is a statue that honors a famous racing horse. Let's find out those answers. Here we go with landmarks. Chicago, Illinois is the biggest city in the Midwest. Here's a picture of it. Willis Tower, the country's second tallest building, is in Chicago. Chicago is an important center for business, manufacturing, and transportation because of its location near waterways. Hint, hint, you might want to underline that. Chicago has always been a transportation hub or a center for moving goods and people. Railroads, like you see here, highways, airports, rivers, and lakes move more people and goods into and out of Chicago than any other city. Chicago O'Hare's International Airport is one of the United States' busiest airports. About 200,000 people pass through O'Hare each day. That adds up to 73 million airplane passengers a year. O'Hare International Airport employs 50,000 workers. That's a lot of people. One of the sites you can go and see is in Minnesota. And here is a picture of Minnesota's Mall of America. It is the largest indoor shopping mall in the U.S. The Mall of America has more than 520 stores. If you spent just 10 minutes in, in each store, meaning going in for 10 minutes and coming out, it would take you four days and three nights to visit every store there. The Mall of America also has 50 restaurants, 14 theaters, and yet an amusement park. You might want to highlight some of that since it's part of your true-false questions. Here's another thing of something you can visit in the Midwest. It's called the Gateway Arch. St. Louis, Missouri is called the Gateway to the West. Pioneers started their journey by heading west from St. Louis, just like we read about with Lewis and Clark. The Gateway Arch in St. Louis was built to honor those pioneers heading west. It is made of gleaming stainless steel. It rises 630 feet above the Mississippi River. You can even ride a tram all the way to the very top of the arch. Another cool place to visit is Mount Rushmore. Two huge monuments are carved into the Black Hills of South Dakota. The first is here is Mount Rushmore. It has the faces of our four American presidents, George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, and Abraham Lincoln. Each of their heads is 60 feet tall. That's like putting 30 Virgil Mills schools on top of each other. The second monument honors a Lakota Indian chief named Crazy Horse. Underline that. Crazy Horse was a Native American leader of the Lakota tribe. The face is 87 feet tall. 
It is still being carved into the Black Hills. When it is finished, Crazy Horse Memorial will be the largest statue in the world at 563 feet tall. Let's talk about things we can do. Here are our questions we're gonna answer when we're done. True or false? Ice fishing is a popular sport in the Midwest. True or false? Most food from the Midwest is made with lots of spices. And true or false? Rock and roll music and Motown music were invented in the Midwest region. Here we go, let's talk about our food. The food of the Midwest is often simple but filling without many spices, hint, hint, underline. Because the Midwest produces most of America's grain, beef, and dairy products, these ingredients are used in many of the foods from this region. Pancakes, cornbread, caramel popcorn, chicken pot pie, and pot roast are all foods that come from the Midwest. The Midwest has a large population of German and Swedish immigrants. So foods from those countries became part of the Midwesterners diets. Germans introduced foods such as sausage and brats and sauerkraut. Swedish brought over lutfisk, which is a type of codfish and lessi, which is a potato bread and meatballs. Midwesterners also like to eat Chicago style dip, deep dish pizza. Here is a picture of it. A deep dish pizza with a crust that's up to three inches tall at the edge and large amounts of cheese, chunky tomato sauce and other toppings. Another favorite food is a coney dog and here is a picture of it. A coney dog is a hot dog on a bun topped with meat, chili, onions and yellow mustard. Because Kansas City was a center for cattle trade, it developed its own particular kind of barbecue sauce that's sweeter with, than what other parts of our country use. Kansas City has more barbecue restaurants than any other city in the US. But St. Louis, Missouri is also famous for its barbecue as well. So lots of barbecue. What about fun things to do? Well. Outdoor sports are popular in the Midwest. People go snow skiing, skating, snowmobiling, and ice fishing, and here is a picture of that. Ice fishing is fishing on a frozen lake or stream through a hole in the ice. The fishermen drill large holes completely through the ice to the open water below. Because of the cold weather, most fishermen use what's called an ice shanty or a shelter which keeps the wind out and the blowing snow off of them as they fish. It's kind of like a little house. Sometimes those shanties can be left on the lake most of the winter and people group together in what's called a shanty town. So they'll put up their shanties and leave them there while they fish throughout the winter. In the summer, people enjoy horseback riding, fishing, and hunting. Water skiing was also invented in 1922 in Minnesota. Ralph Samuelson decided that if you could ski on snow, you could ski on water. Also, every year, more than 400,000 people gather at Brickyard Motor Speedway to watch the Indianapolis 500 NASCAR race. Music. There's two kinds of music from the Midwest region. Rock and roll music was invented in Cleveland, Ohio in the early 50s. A couple songs like Rock Around the Clock by Billy Halley in the comments and Shake, Rattle and Roll were some of the most popular songs in there. Rock and Roll has pulsating drums, fast tempos and loud guitars. It provided teens of the 1950s the perfect excuse to the new dancing ways and to wear some crazy new hairstyles. Rock and roll continued on to become one of the world's most popular and recognizable music forms. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is located in Cleveland, Ohio, and you can visit it to learn all about different rock and roll music. Another style of music is called Motown, and it started in the 1960s with music from Motown Records in Detroit, Michigan. Motown music quickly became popular around the country. 
Motown Records was the first record company to be owned by an African-American and to feature African-American musicians. Motown Records became the largest and most successful record company in the U.S. Many well-known bands and artists started there at Motown Records, including the Supremes, you might have heard of them, the Miracles, Stevie Wonder, Marvin Gaye, the Four Tops, and Diana Ross. We've learned so much about the Midwest this week. I hope you've enjoyed traveling there as much as I have. I'll see you next time for our next stop across the U.S.